look, here's the black holocaust, I knew it was prophecy, a thousand times worse than the Jewish atrocities, uneven playing field, there'll never be a fair score, cause in 1619, that's when they declare war, we the 12 tribes, the ones that the promise reaches, my negro spiritual lyrical honest thesis, I sit back and listen to Khalid Muhammad teaches, or Mr. Garvey, or Malcolm X Islamic speeches, learning sermons from Dr. John Henry Clark. Well, this Maccabees reincarnated lesson, um, and and just knowing stuff like this and all the history and all the the, the Bible, you know, principally most importantly, um, when people deny the twelve tribes, it's a it's it's literally to me a laughing matter. It's a laughing matter because I know you 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 really ain't read the Bible, um, and things like this are like it's so redundantly clear. Um, we're going to go in the book of Maccabees, who the Levites are. It's redundantly clear. And that's what we're going to prove through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shah tonight. Y'all see we in the Zoe room. I got to Zoe it out uh, for the Zoe room. Uh, one second. Um. You know, we're in the zone room. We got it zoned out. 1804. Um, you know, so I'm going go into it through the spirit and power of you. How about show me outside? Um, I want to say all praises and the water to all the Akim, though, who have um, brought it out tonight. All the officers on um, Salakia, too, that we, you know, we weren't able to get Officer DeBach and Officer Rayemi on due to technical difficulties. I um, would have loved to hear them brothers' lessons. Um, and you know, the, the sheep get edified. We're now in our seventh consecutive hour live. Are we heading into our seventh hour live? And um, I just thank the most high that he's enabled us to, to feed his flock on um, to be shepherds according to his own heart and things of that nature through the spirit of Mashiach Yahushai. So, um, I want to go into this now. So, all praise you, how about Shem Yahushai? We're gonna get into the Maccabees reincarnated. I don't know, it might be the third, fourth, fifth, consecutive year I done did this, man, but it's very important this information. Okay, because there's so many point for point similarities that you'd be a damn fool to dismiss them. All right. With that being said, let's start now in First Maccabees two and twenty seven. This on uh, my reader soldier Yad Yadaya. Um, and let's we're gonna read twenty seven to twenty nine. And what he's gonna do is he's gonna read out of the book of Maccabees here in the Bible when the book's called Apocrypha. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna read historical excerpts. Of the Haitian Revolution that verbatim line up with what's here in the Apocrypha, and it's something that occurred um, about two, well, yeah, about about two thousand years before it happened, because you know the Maccabean Revolt was around three hundred BCE, and the Haitian Revolt was started by seventeen ninety one AD. So it's about a thousand uh, years, or two thousand years rather. So like it. So we're going to so first Maccabees one twenty seven. The Salakia two and twenty seven. First Maccabees 2, 27 to 29. Go ahead. This is First Maccabees, Maccabees chapter uh, 2, verse 27. Uh-huh. And Matthias cried throughout the city mm -hmm. with a loud voice, saying, Whosoever is zealous of the law and maintaineth the, and maintaineth the covenant, let him follow me. That's right. So Matthias was the leader of the Hasmonean dynasty in the Maccabean revolt. He kicked it off. So whoever is zealous of this law, he said, follow me. Read on. So he and his sons fled into the mountains and left all that that ever they had in the city. Mm -hmm. Left everything. And where did they flee to? Into the, into the mountains. Into the mountains, right? Read on. And left all that ever they had in the city. Uh huh. Then many... That sought after justice and judgment went down into the wilderness to dwell there. That's 29. That's 29. All right. So let's read this historical excerpt. It says violent conflicts between white colonists and black slaves were common in Haiti. Bands of runaway slaves, known as Maroons, entrenched themselves in Bastions in the colonies, mountains, and forests. Where did all the Maccabees go to? Into the mountains and into the wilderness. The same exact thing, right? Now, Let's go to go to 1 Maccabees 2 and 47. Skip to verse 47. 
verse 47. Uh-huh. They pursued after Maslaki. They pursued also after the proud men. Mm, they pursued after the proud men. Who are these proud men? The Greeks. They pursued after the proud men. Read on. And the work prospered in their hand. Uh-huh. And the work prospered in their hand. Why? That goes back to Deuteronomy 33 and 11. Right? With the Most High saying that he would bless the work of our hands. So it says the work prospered in the hand of the Maccabees who are Levites. Read on. So they recover so they recovered the law out of the hand of the Gentiles. Uh-huh. And out of the hand of kings. Where you at? Verse 48. I just needed 47. Okay, okay. Hold and now I need you to skip to chapter 5, verse 65. So remember, they pursued them, they chased them, and the work prospered in their hand, right? So now 5 and 65. Chapter 5, verse 65. Uh -huh. Afterward, went Judas forth with his brethren uh -huh. and fought against the children of Esau. The white man, read on. In the, hand, in the land toward the south, uh -huh. where he smote Hebron, mm -hmm. and the towns thereof, and pulled down the fortress of it. Mm -hmm. And burnt, yeah, what did he do? He pulled down the fortress of it and did what? And burnt the towers there thereof what round he do? about. Burnt the towers thereof round about. He burnt it down, right? So they chased the white man down, tore down a fortress, and burnt the towers down, right? Now watch this. The carnage that the slaves reaped in northern settlements, such as Akul, Limbe, Flavel, and La Noman, revealed the simmering fury of an oppressed people. The bands of slaves slaughtered every white person they encountered. As their standard, they carried a pike with the carcass of an impaled white baby. Accounts of the rebellion describe widespread torching of property, fields, factories, and anything else that belonged to or served slaveholders. The inferno is said to have burned almost continuously for months. So what was he doing? We started a rebellion and we went to hide in the mountains. Then as we began to progress and the Most High caused the work to prosper in our hands, we began to burn down their fortresses, just like in the Maccabees, just like in Haiti. All right? Uh, that was in on 65? Sure. Okay, go back to 1 Maccabees 2 and start at 69. And read 69 into the third chapter. Read to the second verse of the third chapter. Go ahead. 2 and 69. Uh-huh. So, you got what? This is sec this is uh first Maccabees chapter two verse sixty nine. So he blessed them and was gathered to his fathers, and he died in the That's Matthias. Matthias blessed his sons and was gathered to his father. What I mean he was gathered, he, he was going to die. That's what happened. You get buried with your forefathers, right? Read on. And he died in the the hundred forty and sixth year, mm -hmm. and his sons buried him. And the sepulchers of his fathers at Madin, mm -hmm. and all the, all Israel made great limitation for him. Mm -hmm. Chapter three. Then his son Judas, called Maccabeus, rose up in his stead, and all his brethren helped him. Mm -hmm. As so, Judas Maccabee rose up as the new leader of the revolt in his stead. Right. Go ahead. And all his brethren helped him, mm -hmm. and so did all they that held that held with his father, mm -hmm. and they fought with cheerfulness the battle of Israel. S verse three. So who no, needs a tour? Okay. So now, basically, the reason we bringing that out is because Matthias essentially played the same role that Toussaint Louverture did during the time of the revolt. He was like the the, the principal and the front runner. But he had to pass it along, and where it saw its true success was in his successor, Jean-Jacques Dessalina, which is the same way how Matthias started it, but his true height of success was seen through the son of Matthias, Judas Maccabee, right? So we even have the parallels in the particular individuals, not just in, in battles, but in individuals in particular. So now let's go stay in three and skip to seven. Read seven and nine. Verse seven. He grieved also many kings. Mm -hmm. Who grieved many kings? Judas Maccabee. He grieved many kings. Read on. And made Jacob glad with his axe. Right. But because of how valiant he was, Israel was glad, happy to see him win and defeat their enemies. Right. Read on. And his memorial, his memorial is blessed forever. Uh-huh. 
Moreover, he went through the cities of Judah, mm -hmm. destroying the ungodly out of them mm -hmm. and turning away wrath from Israel. Mm -hmm. Basically, because he knew I got to destroy these wicked people amongst us. So the Most High doesn't come and bring wrath upon us for that. Right. So I can continue to have successful uh, defeats against the, um, the, the devil that I'm fighting against. Right. Read on. Verse nine. So that he was renowned unto the unto the utmost part of the earth, and he received unto him such as were ready to perish. Mm -hmm. So now uh, that was not okay. okay. So this is the same thing it's going to say about Jean Jacques Dessalines. Now it says he defeated Napoleon's forces at the Battle of I can't even say that word, so I'm not going to try to in 1803, declaring Haiti an independent nation in 1804. Dessalines was chosen by a council of generals. To assume the office of governor general, right? Uh, he ordered the 1804 Hang uh, Haitian massacre of white Haitian minority, resulting in the deaths of between three and five thousand people uh, on February between February and April of 1804. So here we have a situation, the same situation where Dessalini becomes very mighty in valor. He makes our people happy, and he defeats Napoleon and his great things the same way um, Judas did, right? So I'll let you know they're the same guy. So now. I want to go to get first. Go to First Maccabees five now, and read fifty six to sixty two. This is First Maccabees chapter five, verse fifty six. Mm -hmm. Verse fifty six. Joseph, the son of Zachari Zacharias and Azarias, captains of the garrisons, mm -hmm. heard of the valiant acts. And warlike deeds which they had done. So you had certain Israelites that heard of the valiant acts of the so-called uh or of the of the Levites of these Maccabees, right? They heard of these valiant acts, right? Read on. Wherefore they said, Let us also get us a name. So let us do this. Let us also be renowned. Let us also win freedom for our people, right? Read on. And go fight against the, the heathen mm -hmm. that are round about us. Let's fight the white man, right? Read on. So when they had given charge unto the garrison uh -huh. that was with them, they went toward Jemnia. Mm -hmm. Then came Georgius and his men out of the city to fight against them. Mm -hmm. Verse sixty. And so it sorry, and so it was that Joseph and Azarias were put to flight. Mm -hmm. And so the guys that thought they were going to go lead a revolt, they were put to flight, right? Read on. And pursued unto the borders of Judea. They were running fast, right? Read on. And there were slain that day of the people of Israel mm -hmm. about 2,000 two men. 2,000 Israelites died that day, right? Read on. Thus was there a great overthrow among the children of Israel. Mm-hmm. Because they were not obedient. Now this is this is key. They were not obedient. Read unto Judas. Unto who? Unto Judas. Unto Judas. Read on. And his brethren. And his brethren. Read on. But thought to do some valiant act. Uh huh. Moreover, these men came not. This is the important part. It says, moreover, these men read. These men came not uh -huh. of the seed. Uh huh. Of those. Of those who what? By whose hand deliverance was given unto Israel. You see that? By whose hand? The most important thing it says here is the reason why this was an unsuccessful revolt is because these guys were not Levites. It says they were not of the seed of those. Read that part again. Moreover, these men came not of the seed of those by whose hand deliverance was given unto unto Israel. You see that that deliverance was given unto Israel through the hand of the Levites because of Deuteronomy 33. In Deuteronomy 33, it says that we would be blessed with the ability to smite through the loins of them that hate us. Now, we take a look at that in Maccabees when the Judites and the Benjamites and the other tribes were trying to start rebellions and, and ward off the white man. They weren't able to do it, right? The same way here on this side, right? When we went to America and you, you either had, um, anytime you take a look at a... Uh, uh, Slave revolts in um, in the Americas that took place after this one, they'll say, yeah, whispers was getting out about the Haitian revolt, right? And then that inspired other slave revolts, even like Nat Turner. But was it successful? No, right? And there's a reason for that. Why? Because, like I said, read that part again, Bobby Lushan. Moreover, 
These men came not of the seed of those by whose hand deliverance was given unto Israel. Is this just a coincidence? The same way how nobody else was able to have a successful revolt in the Americas, the same way during this time, if you wasn't with the Maccabees, you there was no success. That's why. Why do you think? How do you think the tribe of Issachar, the so-called Mexican, got independence? We went and helped them. How do you think the tribe of Asher got independence? We literally went and helped these other tribes, and that's literally why they were able to get their independence through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. It's not a coincidence. We're not just great. We didn't just make ourselves great. The Most High literally blessed us exclusively with that. That's why it was able to happen. You see that? But see, when we came up to Judah, Judah wasn't trying to hear it. And the Judites that was trying to hear it wasn't really fighting with us. That was kind of doing their own willy-nilly thing. And that's why it wasn't able to happen. So it's not a coincidence. And it's facts like this that, again, I laugh at people denying the 12 tribes. You, you have to. Because it, is this is just a coincidence. You have a group of men 2,000 years before who happened to be the men the Lord chose to go and win uh, and get a successful revolt. 2,000 years later, a, say, a niggas who have uh, all sorts of things in common with these people do the exact same thing. But we're just going to chalk that up to coincidence? That's madness, man. There's a purpose for this. The Most High ordained it. He said it. It's, it's crystal clear. It's here in Scripture. We're reading it, right? So they these other brothers from other tribes was going trying to get it. You know what? These brothers is fighting. Let's do it. Let our name be renowned, etc. And guess what the Most High said? Nope, because you're not of the seed of them of whom deliverance was given to Israel. That's the Maccabees thing, right? That's the same thing that happened on this side of the world. We can all bear witness to it. We can all bear witness to what has happened in the history of America, who was able to get a successful slave revolt, etc. Only one group of people was able to do that. It's the so-called Haitian. And then through us going and helping the other tribes, we was able to help other tribes get their independence and freedom. Again, namely like the tribe of Asher, the tribe of Issachar, right? Even the tribe of Simeon, right? So go ahead. That was it on that. You want 63? Uh, no, I just wanted to 62. Okay, that was it. Okay, so now go to go to chapter 6. Uh, uh, 6 and verse 6, and then read to 16. The second might be 6 and 6. I mean, first might be 6 and 6, lock it. Mm -hmm. And then, and then Lysias, mm -hmm. who went forth first with a great power, was driven away of the Jews. Mm -hmm. And that they were made strong by the the armor and power and store of spoils which they had gotten of the armies whom they had destroyed also that they were that they had pulled down the abomination which he had set up upon the altar of Jerusalem and that they had compassed about the sanctuary with high walls as as before, and his city, Beth Sura. Keep going. Mm -hmm. Go to 16. Oh, 16 is like it. Now, when the king heard these words, he was astonished and sore moved, whereupon he laid him down upon his bed and fell sick for grief, because it had not befallen him as he looked for. And there he, con he continued many days, for his grief was ever more, was ever more and more. So here you have this Greek general who has been stricken with a horrible illness, right? And it gets got worse and worse. Read on. And he made account that he should die. Mm -hmm. He knew he was going to die. Read on. Wherefore he called for all his friends and said unto them, "The sleep is gone from mine eyes, and mine heart faileth for." For very care and I thought with myself into what tribulation am I come and how great a flood a flood of misery is it wherein now I am for I was bountiful and beloved in my power but now I remember the evils that I did at Jerusalem mm -hmm. remember the evil I did to so-called black people and Hispanics and Native Indians right same thing like Napoleon all the evil that he did right we're going you're going to see the parallel between these two individuals go ahead and that i took all the vessels of gold and silver that were therein mm -hmm. and sent to destroy the inhabitants of judah judea without a cause i perceive therefore that for this cause these troubles are come upon me and behold i perish 
through great grief in a strange land. Then well, he perished through great grief in a strange land. Remember that also. Through great grief in a strange land. Go ahead. Then, then called he for Philip, one of his friends, whom he made ruler over. What, what did he do? So he he's, his health is declining rapidly. He um, died, is dying in a strange land. Then he calls somebody to make him ruler. Remember all this stuff, right, Reed? Then called he for Philip, one of his friends, mm -hmm. whom he made ruler over all his realm. And gave him the crown and his robe and his signet to the end he should bring up his son and 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 teaches and Antiochus. Antiochus, it's like it, and nourish him up for the kingdom. So King Antiochus died there in the hundred in the hundred and forty and ninth year. That's verse 16. Okay, so again, he had a sudden rapid deterioration of his health he died in a strange land and the last thing he did was call his friends and appoint a leader right now watch this in february of 1821 napoleon's health began to fail rapidly and on may the third two british physicians who had recently arrived attended on him but only uh, but could only recommend palliatives he died two days later after confession notice he died after what confession the same way this guy died after he confessed that all the evil that he did to jerusalem he died after confession extreme unction and uh vaticum in the presence of father angie vignali um his last words were france army uh, uh france army the head of the army josephine so the last thing he did was appoint the ruler of his kingdom to succeed him right um Hudson Lowe insisted that the inscription should read Napoleon Bonaparte. Uh, uh, Mathalan and Bertrand wanted the, the imperial title Napoleon as royalty was signed by their first names only. As a result, the tomb was left nameless. So here we have the, pretty much the same thing. The vexer or the main nemesis of the Levites in both these instances, both all of a sudden got health just rapidly failed. They confessed. Um, they, uh, 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 they, they confessed. They appointed a head and then they died. Also, both in a strange land, right? Because Napoleon died in French Polynesia in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, not in France where he's from. So we both have the exact same situations happening to the exact same cog of person, which is who? Which is the primary nemesis of the Levites. But it said again that we would be able to smite through the loins of them that hate him, right? So now let's go to skip the verse. Uh, actually, no, we're going to skip over that because this is super long. Um... Go to verse 58. Verse 58. Now, therefore, let us be friends with these men and make peace with them. You see that? So this is what the Maccabees are saying here. Let's be friends with these men. Who are these men? These Greeks. Let's be friends with these men, read. And with all their nations. Uh-huh. And covenant with them. Mm -hmm. Let's enter to a covenant. Go to um 58 and go to all the way to 63. Go ahead. And covenant with them. That they shall live after their, that they shall live after their laws, as they did before, mm -hmm. for they are, for sorry, again, for they are therefore displeased and have done all these things, because we ab abolished their laws. Mm -hmm. So the king and the princes. So like this is the Greeks talking about us, right, Reed? So the king and their princes were content wherefore we sent unto them to make peace and they accepted thereof mm -hmm. also the king and the princes made an so oath we, so we accepted peace a peace treaty right Reed? made an oath unto them whereupon they went out of the stronghold then the king entered into mount zion by but when he saw the strength of the place he break his he break his oath. Mm -hmm. As soon as he saw how great and strong we were, this white man immediately broke the oath that he just made. Right, read that he had made and gave commandment to pull down the wall round about. Mm -hmm. Basically, gave a commandment to go right back to war. What is read? Afterward, he departed. He in all haste and returned unto Antio Antiochia. Mm -hmm where he found Philip to be master of the city. 
So he fought against them and took the city by force. And oh, that's that's it on that. Okay, all right. So I'm gonna read about the similar situation that happened during the Haitian Revolution. So it says Napoleon agreed to recognize Haitian independence, and Toussaint agreed to retire to public uh, from public life. A few months later, now so they come into this agreement. This is, I believe, in 1803. They come into this agreement. Everything is all good. Us and the French, right? Allegedly. Then it says a few months later, the French invited Toussaint to come to a negotiation meeting. Uh, will uh. Uh, willful safe conduct, right? When he arrived, the French and Napoleon's orders betrayed the safe contact conduct and arrested him, putting him in a ship headed for France. Napoleon ordered that Toussaint be placed in a prison dungeon in the mountains and murdered by means of cold, starvation, and neglect. Toussaint died in prison, but others carried on to fight for freedom. So here we clearly have two situations where seemingly we're entering into a covenant with the white man to where he's going to recognize us and respect our sovereignty, and we're going to be at peace with him. And both times, he, he double-crosses us, and he double-crosses uh, leadership here of the revolution. Right? So now, let's go to First Maccabees 7, 5 to 22. Okay. This is First Maccabees chapter 7, verse 5. There came uh, unto him all the wicked and ungodly men of Israel. Uh -huh, so you had a lot of sellouts amongst our people that began to gather up, right, and cleave to the white man. Read. Having Alchemius, who was desires to be high priest. Alchemius desired to be high priest. So the Maccabees had a very unique job in Israel, you have to understand. They function as high priests and kings simultaneously. That's why it's called the Hasmonean dynasty, right? But you had Alchemius, who was also a Levite, but was not a part of the Maccabean family, who desired to be high priest, right? Pay close attention to all these cogs, right, Reed? For their captain. Uh-huh. And they, they accused the people to the king. Mm -hmm. They went and accused the Maccabees to the white man, Reed. Saying, Judas and his brethren have slain all thy friends. Uh-huh. And Say, yeah, these guys then killed all your buddies, all your pal, all the white men that you're in league with, read. And driven us out of our own land. Uh-huh. Now therefore send some man whom thou trustest and let him go and see what havoc he hath made among us. Mm -hmm. And in the king's hand and let and let him punish them with all them that ate them. So I can read that again. And let him punish them mm -hmm. with all them that aid them. Right. So basically go and attack the Maccabees, fight against them and everybody that's in league with them. Read on. Then the king chose Bak Bakides, Bakides mm -hmm. a, f a friend of the king who ruled beyond the flood and was a great man in the kingdom and faithful to the king. And him he sent with the with that wicked Alchemist. Mm -hmm. So the white man came with that wicked sellout, so-called Haitian Levite, right? Israelite. He came with him, read. Whom he made high priest and commanded. Made it, the white man made him high priest, read. And commanded that he should take vengeance of the children of Israel. So they departed and came with a great power into the land of Judea. Mm hmm where they sent messengers to Judas and his brethren with peaceable words of this. They came with peaceable words now. You got the Jake that's in the, the, the Israelite that's in the pocket of the white man, and here he's coming with peaceable words to Judas. Read. Peaceable words deceitfully. Uh -huh. do, do what? Deceitfully. Deceitfully. Go ahead. But they gave no heed to their words, uh -huh. for they saw that they were come with a great power. Uh, they seen how deep they came, and they knew something was up. They're not coming with this host, this large army, and they just on some peaceful stuff. Read. Then did they assemble unto Alchemius and Baclides, a company of scribes, mm -hmm. to require justice. Mm -hmm. So here come the priests. Read. Now the Assyrians, mm -hmm. Assyrians, were the first among the children of Israel. Mm -hmm, the Assyrians, which means pious. It's where you get the sect later known as the Essenes from, the Assyrians. Read. The children of Israel that sought peace of them. Mm -hmm. for, 
For said they, one that is a priest of the seed of Aaron mm -hmm. is come with this army. See that? So that's what they were using as the catalyst to think maybe they were cool. They said, well, this is, a, this is an Aaronite. He can't be doing something treacherous towards us. He couldn't be betraying his own nation, not a son of Aaron. That's impossible, right? Read. And will do do us no wrong. Uh -huh. he, he said he's the son of Aaron, and he will do us no wrong. That was the ideology. Yeah, the white man's here. He's the devil. We don't trust him, but he's with the son of Aaron. This son of Aaron is totally beyond our plane of existence to think he would ever do us any wrong. Another Levite, read. So he spake unto them peaceably <clears throat> and swore unto them, saying, We will procure the harm neither of you nor your friends mm -hmm. whereupon they believed him howbeit he took of them three score men and slew them in one day you see that killed 60 men in one day though he had a gave him a false promise read according to the words which he wrote the flesh of thy saints have they cast out mm -hmm. and their blood have they shed round about jerusalem and there was none to bury them. Where you at? Uh, verse 17. Okay, go ahead. Wherefore they fear and dread of wherefore the fear and dread of them fell upon all the people who said there is neither truth nor righteousness in them. Mm -hmm. For they have broke broken the covenant and oath that they made. Mm -hmm. After this removed but Bacchides from Jerusalem and pitched his tents in Bez Bezeth, where he sent and, and took many of the men that, that had forsaken him and, this, and certain of the people also. And when he had slain them, he cast them into the great pit. Verse 20. Then committed, committed he the country to Alchemist. Uh huh. So basically, he was point, appointed over the head of all the country. He was now the ruler of Israel, Alchemius, who sold out, read, who plotted against his brothers with the white men, read, and left with him a power to aid him. Mm -hmm. So Bacchides went to the king. Mm -hmm. But Alchemius, but Alchemius contended for the high priesthood, mm -hmm. verse 22, and unto. And unto him resorted all such as troubled the people, mm -hmm. who after they had gotten the land of Judah into their power, did much hurt in Israel. Mm -hmm. So they did a lot of evil once they did that, right? Go ahead. 23. Uh, that's all I needed was okay. 20 to 22. All right, so uh, we're going to read about the same thing happening. Basically, a wicked Levite selling out, working with the white man to betray his own brother in order to be put in a position of power, right? So it says, Dis disaffected members of Desalina's uh, administration, including Alexander Pichon and Henry Christophe. Now, here we have to understand about Alexander Pichon. He's an Edomite. His father was a white man. His mother was a Levite, but his father was a white man. So he's an Edomite. So we have a layer, when you understand the history of Haiti, you have a small layer of what they would call mulatto Haitians. Not mulatto Haitians like they have a black father and a white mother. Mulatto Haitians like they have a white father and a black mother. Um, they're about 5% of the population currently, but some of those were a part of the revolution, but also they did sow seeds of discord that led to a collapse in leadership and brotherhood between so-called Haitians. Um, and we're going to read about it here, and it plays into and it shows um, who these people are coming back. So again, it says disaffected members of Dessalina's administration, including Alexander Pichon and Henry Christophe, began a conspiracy to overthrow the emperor, right? Henry Christophe wanted to be high, or wanted to be the emperor, just like Alchemist wanted to be high priest. It says Dessalina was assassinated north of the capital city Port-au-Prince at Port Lanage, now known as Pont Rouge, on October 17th, 1806, on his way to fight the rebels. So, as we can see here, it's the same thing. It's that interior a conspiracy that leads to an assassination. The same way we see that. And what was the end of this? Uh, in 1811, Henry declared the northern state of Haiti a kingdom and had himself crowned. Uh, by the Archbishop of Melo. Toward the end of Christophe's reign, public sentiment opposed uh, what many considered his feudal policies of forced labor. Didn't it say that uh, Alchemius did much wickedness in Israel? Uh, what Essentially what Henry Christophe did was put people back in slavery, which he intended to use to develop the country. 
So he uh, uh, co-conspired with the white man to murder his brother in order to be put in a position of power, and then all he did was oppress his own people. It's the same exact thing Alchemy just did we just read about. <laughs> but, you know, neither the 12 tribe chart is fake. The Haitians aren't the Levites. You know, hey, hey, Nagawam, we're Nagawam at. Nagawam, Chief Priest Levi. You see what I'm saying? We just yeah. we just made that up, you know? All right, whatever. Chief Priest Levi. Uh, 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 uh. You know, right. but clearly, as we can see here, the all the exact same things happen. We're only seven chapters through Maccabees. And how many parallels have we historically been able to demonstrate through the spirit and power of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh How do you think we got this information? Do you think that we just woke up and just got this information? How do we? How were we able to go through the book of Maccabees and then find the exact situations happening during the Haitian Revolution and match them up? You think that just happened by the will of man, or you think maybe there were, the Holy Spirit was behind that—that that the Most High sent by Hashem Yahweh All right, I'm not going to give flesh the credit of going through reading this and then going and finding the history that matches up with it point for point. Flesh cannot have that credit. Only the most high Yahweh could possibly get that credit, which is how we know what's what. But uh uh see here and here was the problem with Christoph. It says Christoph was black like Desalina, but he lacked Desalina's consuming racial hatred. Right? Um and under this system a black leader served as a figurehead for the white elitists, essentially, because these Alexander Pishon and them were Edomites. So they really used Henry Christophe as a figurehead the same way that Alchemist was used as a figurehead for Antioch and Bacchides in them. You see what I'm saying? It's the same exact things happen, man. All right? Let's now go to verse 40. We're still in 1 Maccabees 7. We're going to read 40 to 50. 1 Maccabees chapter 7, verse 40. But Judas pitched and Adassa with 3,000 men. And there he prayed, saying, O Lord, when they that when they that were, were sent from the king of the Assyrians blasphemed thine angel, thine angel went out and smote a hundred four a hundred and four score and five thousand of them. Even so, destroy thou this host before us that this day, that the rest may know that he saith the slack here. Let me read that again for verse 42. Even so, destroy thou this host before us this day, that the rest may know that he hath spoken blasphemy. Blasphemy, blasphemously against thine sanctuary and judge thou him according to his wickedness. So the 13th day of the month of Adar, the host joined the battle, joined battle, but Nicanor's host was discomforted. Nicanor's host was discomforted. Read on. And he himself was first slain in the battle. Mm -hmm. Now when Nicanor's host saw that he was slain, they cast away their weapons and fled. Then they pursued after them a day's journey from Adassa unto Gazara, sounding an alarm after them with their trumpets, whereupon they came forth out of all the towns of Judea round about and closed them in so that they turn, turning back upon them that pursued them were all slain with the sword and not one of them was left. Afterwards, they took the spoils and the prey and smote off Nicanor's head and his right hand which he stretched out so proudly and brought them away and hang, and hanged them up toward Jerusalem. For this cause, the people rejoiced greatly, and they kept that day a day of great gladness. Moreover, they ordained to keep, year, to keep yearly this day, being the 13th of Adar. Yeah, it's called the Feast of Nicanor, so that's a day before Purim. So that's why we typically celebrate three days of Purim. Now, basically, this was added on to it. Go ahead. 
Thus, the land of Judah was in rest a little while. That's so like it. So like it. That's not the one I want. That's not what I want. But that's good anyway, just to know about the Feast of Nicanor. Go back to 18. First Maccabees 7 and 18. Read 18 to 26. 18 to okay. Mm -hmm. This is first Maccabees 7 and 18. Wherefore, the fear and dread of them fell upon all the people who said there is neither truth nor righteousness in them. For they have broken the covenant and oath that they made. Mm -hmm. After this, remove Bacchides from Jerusalem and pitched his tents in, Bez in Bezeth, where he sent and took many of the men that had forsaken him and certain of the people also. And when he had slain them, he cast them into the great pit. Then committed he committed he the country to Alchemius and left with him a great like it, and left with him a power to aid him. So Bacchides went to the king. But Alchemius contended for the high priesthood. Well, where you at? 21. I'm at 22 now. Go ahead. And unto him resorted all such as troubled the people. Who, after they had gotten the hand of the land of Judah into their power, did much hurt in Israel. I'm at 23 now. Hold on. No, that's not what I need, man. I want to hold on. Let me look at something. I want to go to the second right here real quick. I think I'm looking for something in second Maccabees instead of first. Second Maccabees. No, that ain't. You good. You good, try. That's fine. Uh, let's go to... um. First Maccabees nine and twenty three, read twenty three to twenty seven. First Mac First Maccabees chapter nine verse twenty three. Mm -hmm. Now after the death of Judas, the wicked began to put forth their their heads, and all the coast of Israel, mm -hmm. and there arose up all such as wrought iniquity. In those days also was there a, a very great famine. Mm -hmm. By reason whereof the country re revolted and went with them. Then Bacchides chose the wicked men and made them lords over the country. Mm -hmm. And they and they made inquiry and search for Judas' friends and brought them unto Bacchides, who took vengeance of, of them and used them this, this, uh, despitefully. Verse 27, so so was there a great affliction in Israel. The like word was not since the time that a prophet was not seen among them. So they were just going and they were just killing and oppressing our people, right, Rion? Verse 28. All I needed was 27. Oh, okay. All right, so now, as we can see, this is, we see this played out on this side of the world in what was called the Caicos, during the time of the Caicos Rebellion. So it says, um, from... 1915 to 1934, the U.S. Marines imposed harsh military occupation, murdered Haitian patriots, and diverted 40% of Haiti's gross domestic product to United States banks. Haitians were banned from government jobs. Ambition, ambitious Haitians were shunted into the puppet military, right? Uh, setting the stage for a half a century of U.S.-backed military dictatorship. For the next 19 years, the U.S. Marines wielded supreme authority throughout Haiti. Within several years, however, changes, charges of massacres of Haitian peasants were made against the military as Haitians revolted. In one such incident at Fort uh, Riviere, the Marines killed 51 Haitians without sustaining any casualties themselves. Assistant Secretary of the Navy Franklin D. Roosevelt awarded Major Smeldy D. Butler the Congressional Medal of Honor. He, The guy who killed all these Levites, Literally, he was given a medal of honor from from uh, your great Franklin Roosevelt. 
right? So this was the same thing that was going on during the time of Pocletes, right? Reports of U.S. Haitian military abuses against the Haitians became so widespread that the NAACP official James Weldon Johnson headed the delegation to investigate the charges, which they deemed to be true. So this is the same thing they were occupying, they were pressing the hell out of us. Our leadership had failed during this time period, and that's the same thing that was going on. Now go to verse 28. Now we're going to start at 28 and read down to, 20, uh, to 33, rather. Verse 28. For this cause, all Judas's friends came together and said unto Jonathan, since thy brother Judas died, we have no no man like him to go forth against our enemies. Basically, we don't got a leader, right? We don't got a hero. We don't have a champion on the earth that the Most High has chosen, right, Reed? And Bacletes, and against them of our nation that are adversaries to us. Mm -hmm. Now, therefore, we have chosen thee this day to be our prince and captain in his stead. That thou mayest fight our battles. Upon this, Jonathan took the the governance upon him. So Jonathan rose up as that leader. Read at that time and rose up instead of his brother Judas. Mm -hmm. But when Bacletius got knowledge thereof, he sought for to slay him. You said verse thirty three. Mm -hmm. Verse thirty three. Then Jonathan and, and Simon, his brother, and all that were with him, perceiving perceiving that, fled into the wilderness of the Koa and pitched their tents by the water of the pool of Asphar. That was 33. Okay, one second. All right, so... um. It's the same thing that happened. There was no leader during this time of this horrible oppression. So somebody had to rise up. And the same situation happened uh, during the 1900s now, during the Caicos Rebellion. So you have Charlemagne Peralta uh, gathered a group of nationalist rebels and started a uh, started guerrilla warfare against the U.S. troops. The troops led by Peralta were called Caicos, a name that harked back to the rural troops that historically took part in the political turmoil of the late 19th century Haiti. The guerrilla warriors of the Caicos, were such strong adversaries that the United States upgraded the U.S. Marine contingent in Haiti and even employed airplanes for counter guerrilla warfare. So it was the same thing. There was nobody there to help us with the suppression. Then here comes Jonathan to begin to wage guerrilla warfare against the Greeks, the same way how Charlemagne Peralta um, did it against the um, the French. I mean, against the Americans, actually, the American white man during this time, right? And they later actually crucified this brother. Um, we ain't got a lot of time because this stream is going to end. So... I'm going to let me skip to matter of fact, no, read, read, go to verse 50, 50 and read uh, to uh, 50 to 53. Okay. This first Maccabees chapter, uh, chapter nine, verse 50. Afterward returned Bacletes to Jerusalem and repaired and repaired the strong cities in Judah in Judea, the fort in Jericho, and M M Mouse M Mouse, how you say that word? Hmm. How you say that word? M M Mouse, M Mouse, and, 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 and Beth Her Beth Haran, and Bethel, and there are men. How you say that one too? There. Hmm. Down uh, Damanetta. Damanetta, and for Rathoni, and uh, to. To Fron, these did he, these did he strengthen with high walls, with gates and with bars, and in them he set a garrison that they might work malice upon Israel. Mm -hmm. He fortified also the city of Bessura and Gazara, and the tower, and put forces in them and provision of of viticle. Vigils. Mm -hmm. Besides, he he took the chief, the chief's men's sons in the country for hostages, and put them into the tower at Jerusalem to mm -hmm. be kept. Put them in slavery. Go ahead. That's uh, that was fifty three. Okay, so Salaki. Now we see what they did there. So I'm going to read this. Um, on November 17, 1915, 
Um, U.S. Marines capture Fort Riviera. I read about this briefly earlier, but it's going to go a little bit more in depth. The stronghold of the Caicos rebels, right? So they took the rebels' stronghold. Uh, American President Woodrow Wilson sent 330 U.S. Marines to Port-au-Prince on July 28, 1915. The specific order from the Secretary of the Navy to the invasion commander, Admiral William DeVell Bundy, was to protect American and foreign interests. An additional motivation was to replace Haitian Constitution with prohibited foreign ownership of land. In December of 1914, Farnham arranged for the U.S. Marines to come ashore at Port-au-Prince, march into the National Bank of Haiti and steal two strong boxes containing $500,000. Right. This is how Citibank got to start from robbing from this robbery. Right. Uh, an office, an officer by career, Charlemagne Peralta was a military chief of the city of uh, I forget how to say the city. So I'm not going to try it. When the U.S. Marines invaded Haiti, uh, refusing to surrender to foreign troops without fighting, Peralta resigned from his position and returned to his native, uh, native hometown take care of his family's land. In 1917, he was arrested for assaulting the home of an American officer of the occupation troops and was sentenced to five years of forced labor. You see that they took the king's son, they put him into slavery. Same thing. He was sentenced to that forced labor, right? So now go to 54 and 50, re, read verse 54 to 57. Okay. Verse 54. Moreover, in the 153rd year, in the second month, Alchemius. Alchemius. Remember, Alchemius is the guy that worked with the white man to overthrow and get a position of power and be a figurehead for him, right? Read. Alchemius commanded that the wall of the inner court of the sanctuary should be pulled down. Mm -hmm. He pulled He pulled down also the works of the prophets. Mm -hmm. What an evil nigga. Go ahead. <laughs> he started to destroy the temple. A, 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 a Aaronite, not just a Levitical priest, an Aaronite, right? Read. And as he began to pull down, even at the at, at that time, was Alchemius plagued, mm -hmm. and his enterprises hindered, for his mouth was stopped, and he was what happened? His his mouth was stopped. What does it mean, Hasakura? What does it mean when your mouth is stopped? What 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 call, what medical event uh, happens to? Rig not rigor mortis. Not rigor mortis is death. Yeah. Who knows what happens? What'll stop your mouth? Anybody? Gout. Huh? Gout. This nigga's crazy. Gout is for your feet. <laughs> Yadi, do you know? No. Does anybody know in the chat? Check the chat. I want to see if the chat knows what's going. To, what event is gonna uh, cause your mouth to stop? Come on. What's the chat saying? Nothing, man. I know y'all niggas ain't sleep. This is heavy information we're going into. Palsy. A palsy is one thing. There's another thing, though. Who said palsy? Don't tell me Bazak said palsy. <laughs> Read that part again. Where we at? What verse you at? 55. Okay, go ahead. And as Just he... read the 57. I guess, I guess don't nobody know. Go ahead. <laughs> And as he began to pull down, even at that time was alchemy as plagued and his enterprises hindered mm -hmm. for his mouth was stopped and he was taken with the palsy mm. so that he could, he could know, he could no more speak mm -hmm. anything, That's right. nor give order concerning his house. Mm -hmm. So alchemy has died at that time with a great torment. Now when the he died with a great torment, right? Read what verse you at? Verse uh, fifty-seven. Uh huh. Now when Bacchides saw that Alchemius was dead, he returned to the king. He ran his ass out of there. Go ahead. Where whereupon the land of Judea was in rest two years. That's right. So Alchemius, Henry Christophe, they're the ones who are going in parallel right now. Watch, ill and infirm at age fifty-three. See the same way he was ill and infirm. King Henry committed suicide by shooting himself with a silver bullet rather than risk a coup and assassination. Uh, 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 he suffered because he, now look, it says King Henry Christophe, he suffered a stroke. A stroke will also do what? Shut your mouth, render you unable to talk. So he suffered a stroke and he was having so much harsh pain, the nigga just banged himself, right? This brother would have did the same thing if there was guns during that time, right? But it wasn't. So he just died an agonizing death. And guess what? He had already died that death <laughs> in a previous life. So 
Instead of doing that, he just got it over with quickly and shot himself in the head. But the same way they both were up in age, they got horribly uh, 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 sick, and they uh, one killed himself, or they had a stroke, and one killed himself as a result of it. The other one just had to suffer and die, right? So it's the same thing. Is it coincidence that you had a nigga that sold out to be the white man's figurehead in order to get power, who was among the brethren of the people who already were in power, sold them out, assassinated the dude, and then ended up dying in a very similar way after having a stroke? This is, this is coincidence. Huh? You know, it's all just coincidence. Just, you know, coincidence. Um, we skip that. Uh, 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 uh. Go to First Maccabees 12 and, 50, uh, 12 and 35. Is first Maccabees chapter 12, verse 35. Uh -huh. After this came Jonathan home again, and calling the elders of the people together, he consulted with them about, about building strongholds in Judea. Mm -hmm. That was 35. Building strongholds. So during the time of uh, you know the Haitian Revolution, y'all can look up the, the various structures that we built, the different forts and citadels and things of that nature that we built. The same way the first thing on his mind was, let's build up fortification, fortified structures. That's a fort, as we get the term fort from, or citadel. That's where all that comes from. And that's what we built in Haiti the same way that Maccabees did in Israel, like Masada, which the Sakari later uh, uh, called home. It was built by the Maccabees. All right. Um, where I want to go. Go to first, go to 13 now, 13 and 23 to 25. We got to wrap up soon. 13, 23 to 25. Mm -hmm. This is first Maccabees chapter 13, verse 23. And when he came near to Baskama, he slew Jonathan, who was buried there. Mm -hmm. He slew Jonathan, read. Afterward, Trifon returned. And went into his into his own land. Mm -hmm. Then sent Simon and took the bones of of Jonathan, his brother, and buried them in Modlin. 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 It's like it. the city of his fathers. Mm -hmm. That was twenty five. Now, mind you, so he was killed. How was he killed? Read that in twenty three again. Twenty three, and, and when he came near to uh, Beska. Best come up. Mm -hmm. He slew Jonathan, who was buried there. So, uh, one of the the uh, the generals, uh, the Greeks, slew Jonathan, right? So now let's read this. Remember, Jonathan is who I've been paralleling to Charlemagne Parate, right? So as Parate was shot in the heart at close range and assassinated, his assassins then fled with his body during the skirmish and the chaos that ensued. In order to demoralize the Haitian population, the U.S. troops took a picture of Charlemagne Parate's body tied to a door and distributed it in the country. The effect was the opposite. Um, betrayed and killed at age 33, Charlemagne Peralta took the dimension of a martyr for the Haitian nation. Uh, Charlemagne Peralta remains were unearthed after the end of the U.S. occupation in 1935. A national funeral attended by then President of Haiti was held in Camp Haitian, where his grave can still be seen today. So we have a similar thing where he was assassinated essentially by the, uh, the rival general, the same way how Jonathan was, as he rose to prominence. As a leader, the same way Jonathan did. Um, uh, go to First Maccabees fourteen and thirty six to thirty seven. First Maccabees chapter fourteen, verse thirty six. Mm -hmm. For in for in his time, things prospered in his hands, so that the heathen were taken out. Of their country, mm -hmm. and they also that were in the city of David in Jerusalem, who had made themselves a tower out of which they issued and polluted all about the sanctuary. So, you had the heathens that were in amongst us, amongst Israel, right? So, they we began to go and take these heathens, right? And did much hurt in the holy place, mm -hmm. but he placed Jews therein. And fortified it for the safety of, of the country and the city, mm -hmm. and raised up the walls of Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. That's 37. Read 36 again. 36. Uh huh. For in his time things prospered in his hands, mm -hmm. so that the heathen 
were taken out of their country. That's right. The heathen were taken out. Right. So that, that essentially is what you would call what? An ethnic cleansing. Now watch. The 1804 Haitian massacre was an ethnic cleansing, which carried out the, remain, uh, the remaining white population of French Creoles on Haiti by order of Jean-Jacques Dessalines. The massacre, which took place in the entire territory of Haiti, was carried out from early February 1804 to the 22nd of April 1804 and resulted in the death of between 3,000 to 50,000 people of all ages and gender. Squads of soldiers moved house to house, killing whole families. Even whites who had been friendly to the black population were imprisoned and later killed. A second wave of massacres targeted white women and children. So it was a similar thing. We got to get these people the hell out of here the same way that they did there in the Maccabees. Let's go to verse 41. Verse 41, also that the Jews and priests were were well pleased that Simon should be their governor uh -huh. and high priest forever uh -huh. until there should arise a faithful prophet. And they shall tell arise a faithful prophet. So that's why the Hasmonean dynasty was in place all up until the time of Hamashiach Yehoshaphat. He was that faithful prophet that was really to arise. All right. Um, I got a lot more on on this, but you know we're coming to an end. Uh, matter of fact, read Second Maccabees five and twenty one. We'll, we'll do that the last one. You said five and twenty one. Uh huh. It's the Second Maccabees chapter five verse twenty one. So when Antiochus had carried out of the temple. A thousand. What he do? He went into our temple and carried out because that was our treasury. That's where our storehouse was. And Moses' sons were appointed as the treasurers of the nation of Israel, right? So all the money for Israel and basically, essentially, the national mint was in the treasury or in the temple. Rather, go ahead. Carried out of the temple a thousand and eight hundred talents. Mm. He departed in all haste unto Antiochia. And so they ran up in our temple and stole all the money about our temple. That's a lot of talents of gold, right? Read. Winning in his pride to make the land uh, nav navigatable mm -hmm. and the sea passable by foot. Mm -hmm. what, what verse you at? Uh, 21 still. Okay, go ahead. Passable by foot. Such was the hardness of his mind. Uh-huh. So, so now they went in our temple, they stole all the money. So... In December of 1914, Farnham arranged that the U.S. Marines to come ashore at Port-au-Prince, march into the new National Bank of Haiti, and steal two strong boxes containing $500,000 in Haitian currency and sail to New York, where the money was placed in New York City Bank. Again, it's where you get City Bank from. This made the Haitian government totally dependent on Farnham for, fin for finances uh, with which to operate. So the same thing happened. All these very same things. There's a few more other things we didn't get to, but I think y'all got the point. Um, with that, a pleasure to be all tuning in. We're coming up on our eight hour. We're literally going to end in a couple minutes. The, the stream is going to be forced to end. So we're going to close here. We're going to, again, give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh, Shai. Make sure you keep your tank fueled. Don't put all your hope that this is going to be the last year and our deliverance is going to come. We hope in it, but we better be ready to go another 20 if we have to, 30, 40, 50, until you die. Be ready to go and maintain steadfast in this faith and use these lessons and this history and all these things we've learned tonight as a symbol of a, a, a great pattern of works for us to follow thereafter in the spirit. Again, all praise Yahweh, Shemiah, Shai, and Shalom.